Did you watch Creating a Salesforce Loop Part 1 and you couldn't get enough? Stay tuned, Jessie is back to present Part 2 of this series where she walks you through a use case. Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides, here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Jessie Rube, a success content specialist with Salesforce Inc., will take you deeper in a step-by-step -step use case to demo a flow loop, assignments, and much more. After eight years as an admin, Jessie joined Salesforce where she creates webinars, videos, and more to support nonprofits. She's crazy about flows and writes about them on her blog, unhandledsunshine.com. Our company is an events company. And when we have an opportunity, where the opportunity, this is a custom field, event interest is a birthday party, then when this opportunity is created, I want the flow to add the three products that have a product family of birthday party. So back to our schema builder here. So I'm gonna zoom in. All right, so my products have a product family, which is a pick list. So if the product family is birthday party, I want those added. So let's look at our products. Products. All right, here are all my products, and some of them have the product family of birthday party. All right, so when a new opportunity is created and the interest, event interest is birthday party, the flow is going to look through all of my products, find the product that equals, whose product family equals. Um, the interest, so in this case it's birthday party, and it's going to add those three products to my opportunity. So as an opportunity product. So we are going to start on an opportunity, and it's going to create three opportunity products by looping through the products record. And when you're working with products and opportunity products, don't forget your price books. I have to set um, a price book on my opportunity for this to work at all. So I said standard price book here. All right, so let's get a new flow. Okay, I'm gonna make a new flow. So even though this is a very different flow, we are still gonna have the same five steps. I'm gonna start with the record triggered flow again, and I'll go with the auto layout. So here in our step that isn't one of the five steps, our pre-step, I guess we're gonna start with when an opportunity is created. And we're gonna do a record is saved again so we can access the flow loop option. So we're gonna say no criteria. So when an opportunity is created, we're gonna do this. So now, our first step is get the records. We want to get the records we want to loop through. So we're going to loop through the products. So let's get a collection of products. Get products. Get products that match event interest. Get products whose, is that the right whose? Whose product family matches the event interest. So I'm not going to hard code in birthday party because we want this to work for other um, event interests. So here we go. The records we're going to get are the product, which interestingly API named product 2. All right, so now we want to find the products whose product family equals, now we're going to find our initial record again, it's here on the opportunity we have that event interest or service interest is my API name here service interest field so we're going to find these products 
and we're going to look, we're going to store all the records and automatically store all of the fields. Okay, so we've got our products that match, the product family matches the event interest. So we've done our first step, which is get our records. Our second step is to start our loop. So we're going to loop through products and we're looping through the collection we just created of products from get products. And this is just saying we're, it's going to loop through this rec these records here. All right, for each item in the loop, for each um, birthday party product, um, we're, for each one, now we're going to do an assignment. So this time we're not going to be updating the record we um, the opportunity or the records we're looping through, we're going to create a totally separate record. We're going to create an opportunity product. We're still going to kind of draft that here. So we're going to we'll say create, but we're not creating yet. We're not going to make a DML statement. We're not going to save it to the database. Okay, create opportunity product. Okay. So here, the variables, we need to create a new resource. This resource is going to hold the information about the new opportunity product we want to create. So each time we're going through a loop, we're going to have this loop variable that we're passing around, the product we're looking at. But we also need a temporary record variable to hold the information about the opportunity product that we want to create. So, okay, I have some other random things here. So, you could say this. Um, thread spool, spool is um, going to be this new opportunity product we're creating. So we're going to say the opportunity or the API name here is opportunity product in the loop and the data type is a record and there's just it's not a collection it's just one at a time as we go through our loop we're going to store the information about the opportunity product that we're going to create. It's just a holding place where we're going to say, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to create eventually. Okay, and these are the values. So over here, we're going to say, on the new opportunity product I'm creating, I want the um, opportunity ID. And now I need to grab the ID from the record that the whole flow started on. Opportunity ID. Great. Now our next assignment, we're looking at opportunity product fields. I need the product. And the product is what's currently in the loop. So I'm going to get the value here from the item that's in my loop. So that's this face mask that's going through the loop. I'm going to take the ID and store it on this spool, which is currently in our loop as our opportunity product in our loop. All right, other required field on the opportunity product is quantity, and that will just say one. Okay, and let me, all right, now, and we're gonna put in one more field here from our opportunity product in the loop. We want to add the total price. And we're gonna say the total price um, equals, now I am doing that for each of these products and you could use the price book to look up the ID or the price, something like that. I'm just going to put it in, hard coded in here. Okay, so that was our third step. We got our records of products, we're looping through the products and we're creating a opportunity product or we're kind of drafting what we want the opportunity product to look like when we create it later. Now we need to add that new opportunity product we're holding to a collection by using another assignment. So we're going to say op products to create. So we're going to create this new resource. We're going to create the collection where we are holding these opportunity products. Opportunity products to, I can just use that name, we'll see. 
Okay, data type is a record, and we want this to be a collection. We're going to collect these spools of thread. So we're creating opportunity products as we go through the loop. Each time we're creating this, we're going to add it to a collection. So I'm going to say the object is up product. Okay, great. And done. So my opportunity products to create, I want to add to this collection the loop. Nope, I don't want to add what's currently in my loop. I want to add the opportunity product that's in my loop. I'm going to add a spool of thread that I'm creating. Once I'm all done with my looping through, I want to create records. I'm creating brand new products. So this is my this is my DML statement after I'm done with my loop. I'm going to write these to the database. So let's use, let's see, we're going to create multiple records and we're going to select the opportunity products to create collection that we just created. All right, so that was the fifth step of our five steps. So even though this flow is very different, we still have the same five steps. We get the records we want to loop through. We start the loop. We use an assignment element to assign variables to either what we're updating or what we're creating. And we're going to hold them in a variable. It could be the same variable that's going through the loop, or we could create, in this case, a new variable, another loop variable, um, for the opportunity product. Then the second part inside the loop is we're going to take this variable and add it to a collection. So we're going to hold it with these other um, variables. Then when we're done, we're going to create, take these variables and actually create them. We're going to um, save them to the database. All right. So I'm going to save this. We'll call this um, okay, and save. And I want to activate it. And then to test it out, we are going to create a new opportunity. I'm going to create a new opportunity from here. Because I need to add in the price book for this whole thing to work. All right. So my event interest is birthday party. Close date. We can say is end of next month. And stage prospecting. All right, so now the loop is going to look for all products with a birthday party interest and add those as opportunity products to my opportunity. And here we are. Awesome. We have three products that have been added. So there are three services that we're adding um, that we offer for birthday parties. And it didn't add all of the other products that we have to the opportunity. So let's just review those five steps one more time. Okay, we start with getting the records that we're going to loop through. Second step, we start the loop. And then we take out, we do this again. We're going to take our first item in the loop, and we're going to look at it. And in this case, we're going to create something new. We're going to say, I'm going to look at the values here, but I want to create another record um, based on that value. So here's my other variable, my second loop variable, where I'm going to store that information. Then my third step, I'm going to take this variable that I created and add that to a collection. So it's going to sit over here. And then once we've gone through all the items, we've got this collection of opportunity products. And after the loop, it's going to actually create those records in the database. And with that, we're at the end. What have you used flow loops for and what do you plan to use them for? Comment below. We would also love to hear what video topics you want us to cover in future videos in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you stayed with us, here's a bonus tip. 
Flows can be intimidating when you're first starting, but keep at it and they become easier with regular practice. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.